and welcome back to Dyson Sphere Project. Project? Project? Program. Program! <laughs> My name is Pooks, and here we are back in Dyson Sphere Program at where we left off, which was trying to fix our problems with steel. Yeah, we, we ain't got enough of it. Uh, so what we were going to do is basically set up steel outputs and start yoinking it in from all around the product, uh, the planet to get all our iron ore in, bake it off into steel and then export from this particular planet. Uh, now we already have a little bit going just so that we're exporting while we're still working on things. This particular planet is a cracker of a planet as well because it's tidally locked which is awesome and is going to be a great planet for later on. Um, it's not just going to be a mining planet, it is going to be a large antimatter production facility and it's going to help power everything uh, because antimatter of course needs our Dyson Sphere receivers and they can only really work when they're pointing, uh, got line of sight pointing towards the sun and uh, yeah so it's really great to have something like this. But that is a while off, we won't be doing antimatter in this episode. Uh, we've got to instead build up our first Dyson Sphere, uh, which is not in the system either as well. I should probably clarify that. We're not building the Dyson Sphere in the system. Uh, it's going to go elsewhere. Uh, but for the time being, what we do want to do is just try and get the Dyson Sphere in our home system to be producing as fast as possible and for that we need all this to be working so you're going to supply it's already should demand on the other one I'm not sure if I set that up properly so we'll go down and set it up soon but this is all we need to do really just start setting up these guys so they can do their thing So it does demand. Yep, I thought as much. And we'll give you some drones. 100% uh, capacity, and we'll make sure you can, uh, you can charge pretty well. Alright. Now, uh, we need some of this to be. Is that a level 2? Looks levelish. No, it doesn't. No, it's not. That's alright, we can take care of that. Uh, oh, I didn't fix the filter on that. That was a mistake. Uh, there we go. Get it up to level 2 here. And then back to level 1. Great. Another one uh, that comes out just to level one here, and then plug into that. Hey, I swear I set your filter. Yeah, clearly I didn't, but I don't know. I feel like there's been a few bugs there, but maybe it's just maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the bug. That's going to help uh, just by flooding it in from the various mines that we'll be setting up. So that actually one trick that I have found is blueprint mode. Right, uh, so just do this. And then I can see all the veins really easily. It doesn't show up what they are, of course, but you know, it's pretty easy to spot iron. So we've got a couple around there. Uh, I reckon if I build like a transporter here and then move them all into the transporter, that will cover all the other veins, I think. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So, it'd be nice if I could just like set a position here. But that's alright. We'll work it out. We'll work out where that is. We're going to orbit to do it. I need to do is find one of those veins, here it is, and then go into the planetary mode, here's the other, another one, here's the other one, 
Alright, so if I stick my... Uh, transporter here. Alright. Then let's go set up the mines, and the last thing we'll do is just power everything. All we need to do here, just set up mines, nothing. Nothing complex, the, the factory is already gone and been set up. We need is inputs, please. Alright, so do the power rails. Now, what is closest power sources over there? So, actually, I tell a lie, I'm gonna go to just try and hook that up now. Start running. Then we'll start running power this way. Over to this guy. Come on, come on, there we go. Alright, get some power poles happening again. Oh, we need to run power, where's the other iron one over there? Alright, so we'll run some more power, like so. Bypass that coal. Well, that's the other thing I could do is put down proliferators on this planet, which I I should actually be able to blueprint to do that too. Because it's going to be a fairly common task, and I'm going to want to proliferate things, so putting down blueprints for it would would make a bit of sense. Okay, so doing that, that, that. And yeah, so you're gonna just basically come down and make your way in. You're gonna want to supply iron. No, you can't duplicate it. Pity. I was hoping that you could just take up all slots with the one product. That'd be that'd be quite handy. And I don't see why you can't do that, given that it can hold five thousand of each. Deb, so you're listening. Uh, this would be helpful and you know make sense I guess what they want you to do is go uh, use the interstellar ones instead but then even then on the interstellar it would be really cool if you could stack up the amount of the one product that they're exporting instead that's all they're doing But it's all good. We will survive, I'm sure. Alright, that's the second mining output post done. That's starting to fill up on iron ore, which is fantastic. And then we've just got this one to go. Make sure it is filled in by my drones before I head away from it. Now I could get that tower drones as well and that might help out supply and at some point maybe it's worthwhile doing it but you know, I'm going to conserve my drones instead. I think it's too necessary because this amount of iron is probably going to be overkill. Probably. Alright so we'll fly over to Z base, or where we're doing a lot, good deal of the work, and 
this has got, yeah, heaps of iron coming in, constant supply. Might ramp it up so it can charge faster. How are we doing on power? Plenty of satisfaction. Of course, most of this is not running. So that could be part of the reason why. Oodles and oodles of this stuff. Look at all, you're stacking up, so we're not gonna run out from our exports. And that is a plan. And heaps of steel as well. So we're in good stead now, I think. The main thing that I could be doing is proliferating before it goes in. So I think that's what we're gonna do here. Um, because that's that's not what that's what we're not doing at the moment, and that's what we really should be doing. I'm actually gonna k get rid of this one, because I'm hoping without this weird jink that I've done here, that we'll be able to get to a situation where we can fit a proliferator there. In fact, let's just run it around the back just to make sure that we can. So that, and then down, and then in, in, right? And then we'll get our proliferation, proliferation lines. Oh god, it started again. Uh, here, we'll want a power pole still, but we're just going to stick it there. And then here's the coal that we're going to need for our proliferation activities. So, let's, let's just work this through, right? How's my soil pile poor? My soil pile is very poor, but make it up. So we're going to say we're going to do five, four, five, and then another five, and two, three, four, five. Now this is going to be our green stuff. This is going to be our yellow stuff. We're now going to go up to blue. Now this is the correct ratio here, but for this I'm going to need diamonds. I'm going to need specifically uh, one diamond a second. So to get one diamond a second for five of these, then I'm pretty sure I'm going to need ten of these smelters. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Right, that's our diamond. Yep. All right. But we don't need anything else other than coal here, right? So what we could do is just continue that on one, two, three, four, five, right? And then make you the graphite input because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Yeah. See, I'm learning learning to do things better. Alright, so my input is going to come in from the right here, my coal, and the diamonds are going to run down and then come in like so. Then these guys are going to come along and run in like so, and then we're going to have an output belt of our paint. That's looking good, I think. So we'll just hook it all up. Oh, the other thing we need is an input line here. So we do that, and then that, and run it down. We're also going to have input, output, yeah. Run you down. Down as well, and run it across, and we have a kind of uh, proliferation station sort of thing. All right, so we're going to save this blueprint as uh, no green paint, green paint layout or production. Right, save, and that way we don't.
don't need to do anything with it in the future. You just lay it down and not work that out ever again. Unless they don't carry across uh, playthroughs, so maybe in the future we'll need that again. <laughs> maybe in the future we'll need to do it again, just because, you know, the playthroughs don't work, but we shall see. Hopefully not. Hopefully in the future I can just reuse some of my old stuff. It'd be nice. Of course, I'd need all the right belts to do that. Be the other thing. All right, so that can give us three aside. That should be plenty. Like so. And then we just want to power things up. Probably something I could have included in my blueprint, but oh well. Alright, do that. And then finally, we'll probably put a splitter on the end here, because we might need it to go elsewhere. For the time being, Tell it to go up, across, and in. That way, everything we're producing now will have some green paint applied to it before it leaves the planet. Hurrah! Okay. That's nice, that's good, that's done. I'm happy with this situation. Now that's not drawing much, so that tells me I've got other problems now back at home planet. But that's fine, I was kind of expecting other problems back at home planet. In fact I'd almost disappear. Disappear I'd almost disappear. I'd almost be disappointed if I didn't have uh, have problems. I don't want peace, I want problems, always. Alright, so we're going to leave Straya. Uh, there's something called something Australis, so it had to be Straya. There was, there's no other option, people. Alright, uh, and head back to our home planet. Now, how are we doing on power? We've still got heaps. We'll break to orbit. Still haven't come up with a a new name for our uh, our home system. That's something I've just been quietly thinking about. Quietly coming up with nothing. Ah, it does forcibly shut you down. I was wondering if it did it. I was gonna see if I could just walk into the planet. Alright, so we can now get rid of that line because of... Oh! Well, oh, hello! Things are taking shape over here. Mm. Mm. Always good to see. Yes, yes. Quite happy with this. Quite happy with this. Progress is being made from our launching pad here, we, which we constructed last episode and launched a couple of, well, about four and a half thousand rockets into space and then we ran out of rockets. So they're coming in in groups of hundreds, which is, you know, nice. Here's another supply of a hundred rockets or so, all running through. Now, unfortunately, it's just, Topping up our closer ones. 
Because these are just splitters. Um, I could try output priorities, but I'm not sure how well it's going to work. Ultimately, I think they are running out of rockets before they uh, get another batch. So, we have other problems to solve and then that won't be a problem. That is the moral here. Alright, so the problem that we were looking to solve here is our asset... Ooh, look at the frame rates start taking a chunk as well. This is a busy, busy planet. Yep, so the problem that we're looking to solve is the problem right here which is that these acid titanium producers are going flat out and can't keep up. Oh, don't, don't mess with the filter. Oops. Right, so we do not have enough to keep things rolling. Oh, I do have some in my inventory though. Yeah, you'll help, you'll, you will help. And so we want to rectify that. And the way to rectify it is to build more of them. Uh, so we only need one furnace to do it, and I'm thinking we could set up a smelting array uh, just down here, where we've got a little bit of space. Send it back up, and then run it through here so it continues to be sprayed on its output. That's the idea. So, we're just going to put that into practice now, and run on the far left here, and then we'll have our inputs on the right hand side. So it's going to be input, input, and input. And then our outputs can run all the way along and then do a sharp U turn for running back up. So there's our kind of a basic sort of setup, but of course we don't want just one of these, we want more than one. And so we will continue the pattern down here. Now the reason why I'm not blueprinting it out is because I think I'll probably want to do different things at each stage in order to maximize what I can do here. Right, so here we're just going to go take it down a notch and do that instead. Uh, and then we'll continue to have our inputs in from the right if we can. Like so. And then I think if I'm lucky I might be able to get one more. run out. Alright. So two rows of it, which is going to do a fair big, fairly big increase to our capacity. So that's okay. I'm, I'm happy to get two rungs out of it. Well, I'm not over the moon, don't get me wrong, but this, this will vastly improve what we've got at the moment. Alright, so you're going to need to come out and then go up at least one. My voice is starting to crack up, so that's that's something as well. Uh, sorry if I uh, suddenly can't be understood all that well. <laughs> Run it down like this and then in. So that's the acid component. Now, as you can see, we're having an issue there where we want to speed that up, speed that up. We want to speed that up too, there we go. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing, go here, go up a rung so we can get over, then down a rung so we can get under. Uh, and then the final thing we need in there is of course steel, so we're going to go here and take the, the steel part, part of it. Uh, we'll get up one level by doing here, we'll get up another level here. Go, oh, no, we need to keep that level 3 to at 
least here. Then we need to go down a level. Go around. Now, what I of course have forgotten is that I wanted to run another input down here, so that ain't gonna work. But what we can do, I suspect, I'll need to rewire this. Wire. Rebelt it. I suppose it's kind of like wiring. I like wiring in that it can, you know, have the danger of turning into a complete and utter spaghetti mess. Uh, think about there and then tell it go down. Yep. Alright, so, and then across here. And then we can do a similar sort of thing. Upper level, across. We say there, and then down to the end. And then the final one, upper level, across, straight back down to the end. And in the meantime, this thing is actually gonna go up two levels here, across, and then connect it back up there. Wicked. One, two, three, and then out the top here. And with any luck, oh, hang on, I just need to set the recipe. With any luck, though, I'll just be able to drag that down. That's going to be okay, yep. And then do the same thing along here. Now the final thing we need is power, which I didn't think about. Oh dear. Um, we might just be able to cheese this, basically. So I'm just lucky there. That's not that's not any kind of skill, that is just pure luck and look, yeah, we're still not still not that lucky, but if we do that, it'll get it. Yeah. So that's the point where these satellite stations are gonna be a lot better. And they're looking more and more attractive to do. That does mean that I need to make wireless power towers as well though, and it's gonna consume more frame material too. Which is going to need, uh, ironically enough, this stuff here. Alright, so that's plenty of acid coming into our system now. I think it's plenty of acid. Where does all this acid actually come from? Uh, over here. Also from over here. It's going into that, yep. Spray painted. It's ultimately coming from this thing here, yep. And it's being shipped uh, into this one. Alright. So, that should be substantially increasing. Yes. Yes, look at it all. It's beautiful. In fact, we need a belt upgrade to handle it all. That's better. Lovely. So this should start being able to keep up a little bit better soon, I will hope. I will hope. <laughs> hope, 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 hope. Let me get rid of the few things in my inventory just while I'm standing around. Pop up my power. Um, yeah. And... Yep. Still 
definitely not enough at the moment. I'm just kind of hoping that it's catching up though. take yeah they're the ones taking it Yeah, so still not production. We still don't have a high enough production. Because, well, we've got stuff coming in. The, the basic litmus here is that if we had a high enough production, then we would start to see some white appear here. It's a quick test without doing any math, which we all know that I'm horrible at, so it's good that we're avoiding it. see that the belts are empty as well. So if we had belts starting to stack back, which we are to a degree with these guys, that is makes me hopeful. Uh, but if, yeah, so we need these belts to really start stacking backwards. And once that happens, then we have a good idea. Have I? Oh, I've missed a trick here. Hang on. Oh, these guys should all be hooked up. Whoops. Well, it's a happy accident that we happen to be flying around looking at things not working. There we go. You will now work. Uh, I'm kind of wondering... Ah, yeah, because... Theory was that these things consume less um, acid titanium. What are these? They're the rows of 12, aren't they? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Really? I did 11s? Did I just want to hit myself or something? 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Alright, either that or I can't count. Hang on. 4, 8, 12. Yep, alright. So there's 12 of them in a row. Every 6 seconds, it's going to need 1. And therefore, it needs 2 a second for each. Um row of these. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. We should be demanding 16 a second. Now the smelters themselves, assuming they're fully stocked, which they are, will all produce Four every 12 seconds. So let's just get out the trusty calculator here. So that's... Hang on. One every three seconds. So every three of these produces one a second, is what that means, I'm pretty sure. Alright, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So we've got 3, well hang on, we've got 20, 
21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So we're producing 10 a second or a bit over. So we're still not going to keep up with our frame factories demand, let alone the demands of anything else. We need more people. All right. So this bit area here looks good. <laughs> and what we're going to do is some quick uh, cutting here to let everything kind of flow through a little bit easier. Right. So I can flow it under and run it in here and run it back uh, in, I guess. Now we're going to kill some of these power poles. That's probably not going to do anything bad. No, it doesn't look to have... Uh, so a bit superfluous there. And run you under, you under, you under, and then I'm just going to pause and think a little. I don't think I can get three rows of it, so we're going to have two rows here. And we might as well try and make them central, right? We're down and then up to the... They're going to be central, I hope so. To try, to be fair. Uh, Alright, so we do that, we do that, and then we do that, and then we try and fill it up with as much acid production. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's going to be another 18 of them. I must admit that the frame rate is really starting to suck a little bit. But, you know, that's uh, not going to be necessarily the developer's fault or anything. Just want to make that clear. It's going to be my computer saying, oh no, you make me work so hard. Probably set the thing to be acid titanium here. Then we'll do. Oh, come on. No, we should be able to do that. I'm just going to set this one first. And then we'll work it out, right? We will work this. You should have a gap. Damn it, you should have a gap, I say. And try that again. Maybe it's just... So that means I can't get steel into it. I think it needs to go up one. Okay, let's 
let's let's just do a smaller scale test first to make sure that our belting what is that oh god no make sure that our belting system works here all right so we're gonna have something along those lines and then we're gonna have one offset something like that so it needs to be able to yoink here. Yeah, it's not gonna. Making me think we want to do a more efficient design. So we are not wasting all this space. Go across like this instead, and then I can maybe turn it around at the other end. Um, is there going to be enough room? Not. Nah, I need to go down at least one. Ah! <sighs> All right. It's okay, people. We'll get through this with a minimum of sanity left over. Oh wait, that's bad, right? No. Okay, do this. Hello, autosave. Nice to meet you. Yep, you've just screwed me over. Thanks. So we run it along like this way. Eventually we could actually extend out into this area because that's our old steel production. Uh, and then we'll run it like that. Chop this off, and like so. Instead, I run down along this way. Like these miners aren't doing shit anymore as well, so we'll get rid of those. belt across like so and you're gonna go up one level can you get to the end there yep you can oh that's gonna be tight I think it's gonna be okay though That's not going to be though. No! Well, because it can't currently keep up, we can do stuff about that though. Right, so there's not enough input to really justify the whole thing. Not anymore. So we're going to make that get up there and go out at least one more. And then that can get up there. Do a U turn straight back down. In fact, all I could have done was just an immediate U-turn, but, you know, loses the symmetry. And I didn't think of it. <laughs> oh, man. It's alright, I'm going to keep the symmetry. So silly. Alright, that's good. 
That en enables us to get another rung in. All the way down here. What a waste of belting, but you know, the game didn't want to play ball. Uh, do that. And then you can run here, go up one, bridge the gap until you go down here and make back in. Okay, now we're talking. Set you as a recipe. Uh, output, input, input, input. Run you guys along. Say guys, that might be ladies. same here, but you don't want to work, yeah. And run down as well. Okay, we have, oh, no, you're wrong. You're all wrong. Damn it. <laughs> now I know how it feels, because, you know, sometimes I watch streamers and I, I yell at the screen, going, no, you made a mistake, please realize you've made the mistake, because you're going to come back here and talk about why you're wondering it's not working, etc. That was nearly me right then. That could have been me. Alright, so we have an acid supply issue. <laughs> suspect our issue is not that we're not transporting in enough acid yet. It's definitely not. It's just that there's not enough of the belt to really... to get everywhere we want. Got maximum efficiency line. Yeah, we do. So I'd love to get another one out somewhere and I think this might be our opportunity here. Now of course we want it proliferated too so that we're getting the maximum value out of our resources. So I might run it along a little bit and then run it up like so and along. Now our proliferator is going to go here. I'm just going to be a little bit cheeky. Just kind of take this one here. This very overstrained proliferation belt already. Poor, poor thing, but it's all for a good cause. I think you'll agree. Even, even if you don't, it don't matter because you're, you're, you're a machine. You, you don't really have feelings. All right, so we're going to take this acid line and we're going to do a top up somewhere along the line. it really given that that's taken the inner track I think that we have no real choice here to do 
this back down to level one and go across oh I can't go across there go across then no no what we need to do is just cut it there hope that this works yeah Well, that acid is the thing that it needs most. Uh, because, yeah, so it needs double. That all makes sense. Alright, so we've got plenty of acid now with that second acid line coming in and filling everything up. Uh, we also have a heap here, so we're going to try and find a place to put it. Namely, this tower looks great. There we go. Uh, same with the... Oh, that was steel. Steel we can put into a different one. Steel should be this guy. Go. Alright. So that's looking pretty good, apart from this steel line is not being proliferated either. Uh, but later on it should be. Or later on it will be because we know that we do have something that imports steel. Uh, that's proliferated, it's just that it was probably full at the time. I could just empty it, but that would seem like a big waste of steel. The whole pr point of proliferation is really to make my resources go or last as long as possible. So that would be silly. Alright, just make sure that these are all powered up and doing things. Yep, you're all outputting at some point. Okay, that's good. That is good go back over to our frame factory and watch the titanium acid steely stuff pile up so at this point we're up to here it's not very far really we are definitely not producing enough a little bit further down here. Nope, not really. Alright, so we've piled up on our third layer here. That's an encouraging sign. Nope, we need a constant stream. And stream means a good, you know, good bladder of uh, of steel, of alloy. Sorry. Interestingly enough, we are smashing that cabin nanotube requirements. In fact, that's that's lacking here. lacking there. Ah, uh, yeah, I think it's no. It should be the fourth and final one that it will end up ends up being a problem. Do we have a constant supply. I think we do. Yeah, we're fill filling two lines. Everything's kind of running 
all the time. We'll get the occasional pause, but I think that is correct that we should get the occasional pause. Because you can't do quite all the factories that are produced with just a single line of carbon nanotube. I think it's uh, nanotubing, I think it's to a second off the optimal amounts. certainly got more factories running up the top now so that is a good sign we have also stacked up our acid titanium to that point also a good sign and what we should be seeing we're starting to see some trickle in even as far as a third factory now all right good signs are coming we have some good omens Augers are telling us good things about the supply of our acid titanium. Now it will probably get even better once we have proliferated steel in here. And we're starting to see a little bit of proliferated, you know, at least level one proliferation now. And level one proliferation should mean that gets 12.5 percent extra products so once it gets up to level two for all products then we will get 20 percent extra products which from each production that should be nearly a full unit of acid titanium i think because producing for a run here occasionally which is nice it's a good sign to see plus these guys will be adding to it of course now we are using it for stuff in our mall apparently oh uh, why is that what are you what are you being used ah uh, this that would make sense our launches. I do, that's gonna shut up soon. It's not gonna need much anymore. Let me get some steel crumbling down the line. Yeah, look at our frame per second. 26 slash 49. Terrible. Every ball. That's alright. What happens when you get to this sort of crap happening all on your planet all at once? Yeah, look at those rockets. That's what we want to see. I kind of like that it's a staggered launch and not just all at once now. It's like constant activity. Makes it look very cool. Like, hey, yeah, we've got a bustling sort of thing. Everyone's coming and going all the time. Or well, in this case, just going. It also is encouraging to see those rockets kind of starting to make it back down a little bit. And then we've also got full launching capacity on these runs. At least uh, four in, which is not bad because it's a run of ten aside. So definitely our rocket production is kicking up and kicking into gear, which is the whole point of this frame factory here, or a good point of it, part of it anyway. So yeah, serious, serious rocketry happening here. Now the other question I guess is how's everything else holding up? Uh, we've got plenty of processes coming in from there. Let's go over to our other processes. Yeah, the planar guys are all going along. So is the quantum chips. 
very easily keeping Char up at the moment. At the moment, that may not continue. And of course, we want to check out the all important Dyson Sphere, the thing that we are doing this for. Now, how are we going on time as well? Uh, we are sitting at. I don't know, my time is out. Ah, well, uh, I started about 8 o'clock, I think. Oh, I know, I can tell how long we've streamed. Yeah, so we've streamed for an hour, we've got about 10, 20 minutes left. Oh yeah. That's how it's going. Now the whole thing looks pretty patchy at the moment, of course. Uh, because when we go into it, we do have this kind of patchy model that we're trying to create. That's the point. And you can see on these bits where it's actually started to fill in. So we have a whole heap to go on the structure. We have a whole heap to go on the cells that need to be filled in as well. But on the plus side, our generation is at... Uh, 1.3 at the moment, but our request is at 1.72, so we definitely need this to be outputting more power. Now the thing is that most of our Dyson Swarm has now disappeared uh, because it's all being utilised to fill in the, the cells, basically. So, ironically, our power production has gone down as a result of starting our Dyson Sphere. But of course, all of this stuff is permanent. We don't need to top it up. Once it's in place, we don't, we're not spending resources to constantly produce it. segments will start filling out. Maybe a poor example, we'll wait for a few more to come. I think it will tell us how much we need. I'm gonna click on each node. So yeah, delivering seven, constructed sixty-nine, plan a hundred. So you need a hundred rockets for each of these well for one of this particular node, right? It's probably going to be very similar for every other node that I've got actually because they're all the same basic three point pattern. And then we also get the same sort of cell structure. In fact, I think my cells aren't really keeping up with supply and demand, is maybe not keeping up. Might want some more launches shooting things into space at some point. out so we can see it happen. Don't prove me a liar. Delivering another eight. We will wait to see you expand into your full self. The self that you were meant to be. There we go. Yeah, we got two in one. You know, how has it happened that quickly? Right. Anyway, we got a heap of work to go, obviously, but it is lovely to see it all come together, and especially when you can actually, you know, see it. You go up into the air. Oh, an autosave. And be able to see that Dyson 
spear really coming together. Don't go to the gas giant. <laughs> Gravity, you are a heartless bitch. And that really improves our frame rate, of course, getting off that planet. So all you really see now, it's calculating everything in the background, of course, but all you're seeing is just some of the, the interstellar points. But it's only once you get close that it loads in the actual thing that's stressing my computer at the moment. I don't know if it's RAM or if it's CPU that's causing our issue. Only when we get to here, it doesn't really matter. Okay, but we should be thinking of plans. So we have researched everything we can up until the white, um, white science. So that seems to me to be an obvious goal that we do want to get that up and running. So white science will be our next goal. Now to produce this, and I'm just going to show you a lovely view of the Dyson sphere forming while we look at this. We need every colour of science, and then we also need antimatter. So we really need antimatter production up and running. So to produce uh, antimatter then we actually do it out of one of these guys. So instead of producing power, it will produce antimatter instead. Once we have said antimatter, uh, then we can push it into the universe matrixes and start up our research. The other thing that we can do is also produce annihilation constraint spheres and these are going to be useful for two things one for the artificial stars so that will mean that we're going to generate insane amounts of power so 72 megawatts for one of these as long as it's supplied uh, with you guessed it antimatter uh, or antimatter fuel rods specifically and so that's the other uh, point here is that we need 12 antimatter 12 lots of manager matter in the form of hydrogen, um, as well as a little bit of acid titanium, of course, even more required, um, and an annihilation constraint sphere to, uh, to use the ultimate power source. So to put it in perspective, these deuteron fuel rods, I don't really run out of power too quickly on them, and it's got 600 megajoules in it. Antimatter fuel rods will give me 7.2 gigajoules. So one of these is worth about most of the power that I've got stored up in uh, my energy with, you know, 100, 120 of them, roughly. So we're talking serious amounts of power from those things. But of course, you need a functioning Dyson sphere to really produce matter, uh, antimatter. And for that, you know, we, um, we need to make this bigger. So it's kind of a bit of a waiting game at the moment and just making sure everything's flowing through into this uh, production facility as fast as possible, which means making sure that our rockets uh, factories are producing as fast as possible uh, and also shooting off our solar sails at a more constant rate, I think will be the other point here. And so that's the thing that I'm going to set up now. We're going to start using up those solar sails a lot faster by setting up some more guns, shooting them into space. So we'll come down to the planet. We'll, we'll accept that uh, we're going to crash and we're also going to set the horrible frame per second uh, that comes with being here. Just going to look at my frame factory. Yeah, see, it's now starting to top out on acid titanium, yay! And now it's carbon nanotubing that's causing the problems. Or rather, it might be. I don't think it actually is causing a problem. Largely because our supply of it is, should be pretty good. Yeah, so we're pretty full on it. So that is excellent news. Now, whether or not that continues is a different story should mean 
that we're getting plenty of frame material. This frame material is full up here as well, so all of this top stuff is coming down to fill up and back up. That is a good sign that everything's backed up because it means we can bring this lot online as well. Cool. I was waiting for it, but uh, to be able to do it, and the time has come. Uh, actually, what we might do is just grab another set of those. Come on, let me click it. There we are. One, two, three. Uh, up the level, yep. down a level, out like so, out like so, oh god, and there we are, and out like so, brilliant, yeah we got more frames going on, or Dyson Sphere components, which means that these factories will get, uh, I think, if I measured things out right, Strong if. Um, it's a bit iffy. But if I got it all right, then this will mean that these guys are going to be uh, full. Basically, they'll constantly be producing things. I'm not sure that will happen, but I can always hope. That means a more constant supply of those rockets going into orbit. Uh, now I'm pretty sure our solar sails, yep, we've got plenty of those. Which is good because we're going to try and shoot more into space. Uh, now, where are we going to shoot them from is the question. So I was originally thinking more of this space up here, uh, along here, but I'm not sure if I'm going to have the uh, the soil pile to do it really, so I might actually just need to find another space on the planet to shoot things uh, off the planet. Uh, yeah, that's still not doing anything as well, I need to think about that. Uh, they're all running actually. Another thing that we should consider is that these are all switched on at the moment, right? Which means we are drawing things down. Oh, not all of them actually. They are certainly being utilised. Alright. We do have plenty of them though. Alright. I'm going to take a leap of faith and just say that our solar cell production is uh, sufficient. It'd be a bad leap that we're taking. Uh, but we'll grab a keep a couple of those. 30 or so. I mean 60. Just so we don't run out. <laughs> and we're gonna go over our launch facility. That seems like a natural place to be doing more shooty things in this space, right? Except for, of course, we're not going to have any, any space for it. So maybe just pass the launch facility. Ah, here we are. You look green and verdant. Let's destroy you. Um, put you down here. Drop some of these. Right, you're going to have solar sails. Solar sails, solar sails. Solar sails, demand them. And then, uh, transportation, no, it's gonna be under Dyson Sphere Program, yep. Under its namesake, do this. I can't remember if 
they need an input thing? Yeah, they do. Alright, so... Do that. Closer, but it can make it tight in terms of just uh, spacing and everything, power in particular. Actually, I made that mistake up there and it took me ages to work everything out. So we're just avoiding that scenario this time. Up across, up again, and there. thing I didn't do was configure what orbit they should be targeting. That's relatively simple. So this bottom rung can go with orbit one. There you can go back to one. Oh, actually, we'll go with two. Take it back. There we go. All right. 
So we've got more solar sails flying into space now, which is great. Uh, launch facilities are uh, looking good. You've got a backlog of two. You've got one. Got none. Fairly really encouraging as to how many we're continuing to launch at once at the moment, yeah. We seem to have a very constant launch of things. How are we doing for power? Our consumption is getting very close to our power supply, in particular our discharge power supply, which is Maybe it can be concerning, but it's, you know, part of the point of antimatter is it's going to solve that problem to a large degree. Because, you know, 10 antimatter power production plants will pretty much do the same generation. Well, not quite, but pretty close to the same power generation that we can do now. Yeah, so we are getting rockets down as far as these last ones. So that's a really healthy, encouraging sign with our ability to continue to pump stuff into the Dyson Swarm or Dyson Sphere. Let's try and go somewhere where we've got a better view of that. planet there we go yeah we've got a nice amount of that all coming together now our forge world is actually quite close to that Dyson Sphere really is a lot closer than I expected to be. I'm going to do my head on it when I'm there. Actually, are we encompassing? Are we putting the planet inside the shell? Is that what I just saw? I not be through it. <laughs> I don't think it can, but no, it's, it's outside, but it's only just outside. When we're standing on this planet here, we're going to have this very, very close Dyson Sphere here. So let's go stand on it. Let's go have a geezer from the Forge World's perspective. staring at this massive structure. Oh, I love how cool this game looks. He shows off all the ways that it could look bad too. sightseeing now I think I mean we can there's other stuff we could be doing absolutely I suspect there's even problems back on that forge world that I haven't looked at for a while but at the moment I just want to you know admire what we've got going on here let's check out all these solar sails making their way in started to produce that weapon for us so where are we at of the Dyson Sphere now. Yeah, so at 1.74 gigawatts generation capacity, which is greater than our requested power, which is fantastic. 
Which Shell is doing a huge amounts now. It's really coming into its own and becoming worthwhile. So I think that means that in the next episode we can start working towards antimatter production. Of course, the world where we create antimatter, I wonder if we do it on Forge. Not my actual original intention. My original intention was to do it on Earth. But it's so laggy there now that I'm wondering if I should actually just pick a different planet. Oh, mind you. Yeah, the auto save's coming out. Ow! settings or maybe just tone it down a little bit to help save my computer. I don't think it is graphic settings that's doing it. But it is all coming together and uh, the other thing that's not designed yet as well that we'll have to do in another episode is finish the design uh, because the top's not done, neither the bottom. And yeah, we want to finish that off. So that's where what we're going to do. All right, so anti-meta production in a future episode, or we're going to start working towards it at least. And as well as finish off the design of the Dyson Sphere so that it can be completed and we can marvel in all its glory. It's Dyson Sphere number one, of course. Yeah, yeah, I, I know how to drive, thanks. Go away. I, I know this stuff. I'm sightseeing, damn it. Alright, so we're going to land on the Forge World just to finish this off. For tonight, smack into the surface here. How's it doing on power? Let's just check in. Yeah, plenty. plenty. In fact, even our massive motor factory, how are you doing? Still producing lots of. Yeah, we'll look on so many motors. So much spaghetti as well. Man, look at that. How did I deal with that? I should have been driven mad by this. But it's still working. It's still producing things. So that means we are demanding motors. Reasonable amount. We've got a demand of a thousand. Oh, of course. Because we ship a thousand at a time. It's plugging along whenever it needs to. Exactly what it should be doing. I don't think it can actually work to capacity if it uh, really gets stressed because we don't have enough iron and magnets coming in being produced on the planet, but that's neither here nor there because it's not going to be a problem for a while, uh, a long time. Anyway, I'm rambling, so thank you very much for watching tonight's episode. I know it seemed like we didn't do a lot, but we did actually accomplish a fair bit in just making sure our production of our Dyson Sphere is going according to plan and going smoothly um, and just shoring up our inputs to some extent. We will be uh, expanding on that as well as going to visit some more systems in future as well. So, you know, this, this is only the beginning. This is the beginning of the end uh, of the mid game. Uh, but really when we zoom out and we look at the star cluster we're in we have many many stars to take over to expand to we've only really just started on a dyson sphere for together we also want to put a dyson sphere around straya straya is getting its dyson sphere and we haven't even visited atlas as well so maybe we've got some cool planets in there as well actually can we tell well, tell me Hurricane Stone Forest, that just sounds crazy. Uh, reverse rotation, we can tell if they have special things. Of course, none of them have special things, but oh well. I'm just excited to see, you know, Hurricane Stone Forest. Oh, wind energy is going to go well there. Oh yeah, it's also telling me which one's going to have the special. No, it doesn't say the special things. Okay. 
Uh, so yeah, we will be going out to Atlas as well. The aptly named Al Atlas because it will. Hang on. No, 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 no. That star system. Tell me about the star system at Atlas. There we are. Uh, because it has all these rare resources, and we're going to get optical braided uh, crystals. It's going to make our special, special miners uh, that we haven't even constructed those yet. I know, right? So we need to go out there and grab them. There's so many things to still do. So if you're thinking, "Oh man, we're getting towards the end," we're not. This, this is just the beginning. Uh, it's an important beginning, and it takes a lot of effort to get here. We we're about 40 hours now. Uh, but it is just the beginning, so stay tuned folks, we will be continuing to build up this Dyson Sphere as well as the cover of the entire star cluster in Dyson Spheres. That is the goal of this series. Anyway, uh, oop, I was going to go hit the save button, but that's bad look for my outro. So let's, uh, let's stare into space. Something, no, we're on the wrong side of the planet. Ah, yeah. oh, here we go. So, as, a, as we gaze at our massive Dyson Sphere, I will say thank you very much for watching today's episode. If you enjoyed it, drop me a like, drop me a follow, drop me a subscribe, depending on whether or not you're watching on Tube, Twitch or YouTube. And I will see you and this Dyson Sphere in the next episode. Thanks, guys.